there are men here on this border on guard. Tonight you'll meet the men of the 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment at their post with host Sergeant Charlie Gill on Freedom's Frontier. The 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment has a twofold mission. First, the surveillance of the East German Czechoslovakian border. Other units have similar tasks, such as the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment to the north. It's a job that requires watching, waiting, virtues of professionalism and patience. The other mission of the 2nd ACR is to be always combat ready. And yet, due to the very proximity of the 2nd ACR, this task is at least as important as the border mission. Tonight we'll watch as the men of Alpha Troop, 1st Squadron, 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment conduct their business. Here at Merrill Barracks in Nuremberg, it is silent. The Bavarian night seems to lay a blanket of security over the American soldiers who sleep here tonight. This is the headquarters for the U.S. Army 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment, an outfit with a unique mission, staffed by some unique men. In the regimental operations center, these soldiers are wide awake, collecting information. Information fed to them from their troops at the West German Czech border. This is what all the training and preparation come down to. Waiting, watching, protecting. Is looking it on the map first and then double check in the book where you get map reading skills into and pinpointing towers. Each tower has a um, certain number to it, so you don't have to write down the grids or anything. And we're just matching up the grids to the serial numbers in here, so we can, um, you know, identify the right towers with the numbers. ST two two one three. It's not in the open. Okay, how about the grid for the one at the camp? One well, at the camp would be Uniform Romeo zero six four four nine five. Does it match on the map? Hidden deep in the forest of West Germany are the soldiers who were rarely seen, also members of Alpha Troop. They patrol the border not by foot nor by jeep, but huddled inside this armored personnel carrier, and they watch with electronic eyes. We're looking for uh, enemy vehicles, personnel, walking alongside the fence, uh, activity around the towers, activity uh, inside the PS camp or uh, alongside the PS camp itself. It's a very hard and st stressful job. When we see something that doesn't look right, what we do is we continue to observe it and we find out exactly what's going on out there, whether if it's on their side or on our side, and we verify that using the radar itself and using uh, night observation devices. Light wheel vehicle. Light wheel vehicle approximately two k's from our position. Uh, moving southwest. Still moving, going southwest. Approximate speed? Approximate speed, approximately 15 miles per hour. Yes. <laughs> the surveillance of the border is done in conjunction with the Zoll, the German customs officials. Hello. Another German agency that participates is the Bundesgrenzschutz, the German border police. They work hand in hand with the Americans and on this day visit a place known as Hohenberg Castle. From here you can look directly at a Czech border camp. Bauer Hubert is a member of the Bundesgrenzschutz. His father fled from a village that once stood in the very spot where the Czech border camp is today. They could take from their house 20 kilogram of a bed or a, what, what, uh, personal things pictures, uh, such a thing, and then they had to go, the Czechoslovakian came with a, with a gun and said, go away. This is a funny feeling, it is not good when a, a country has to make a fence to hold their people. The people have no freedom, not good. Long before Alpha Troop ever arrives at the border, their mission has already begun. That of always ready. The duty is one that takes not just physical, but mental preparation as well. Plus the check and double check that separates an outfit ready and one that just might be. One of the foremost tasks in getting ready for the border is obvious, and that's packing ammunition. 
We're loading up uh, Sabo and Heat. We're loading up 50 rounds, Sabo, combination Sabo and Heat. And 50 caliber ammunition, 7.62. Leaders throughout the Army know that to be effective, you must check and double check. Inspections here on the border take on added importance. Why don't you set the headspace and timing? What's your frequency for today? Uh, we're looking for the general readiness of the vehicle, see if it's ready to roll. Uh, combat readiness is as well as mechanical readiness. Charlie Troop of the 2nd Armored Cav is primed. 
They have spent 30 days on board of duty out of Camp Gates, 30 days of living in the cold, slopping through the mud, living in close quarters. The soldiers of Charlie Troop are looking forward to Alpha showing up. We were kind of biting at the bit now, ready to go back. Two weeks to come back up here again, so they're kind of anxious to get back. This is my first time in CAV. Fourth tour in Germany, three times tank battalion. First time CAV. That's different. It's really been an experience for me. So Charlie Troop will leave Camp Gates, their home for the past month. They are headed for no vacation, no matter how deserved one may be. We get back, and it'll be about six, seven hours to get back to Benelock. Then we go up to the post itself. We've got about three hours recovery. But looking at right now, it's going to be about five, six o'clock in the morning. We finish. And of course, you're going to be there by the next day off? No, we get about half day off. But we got to get prepared for training. We start gunnery training Monday, so we set up the range on Sunday and get ready to go. Alpha Troop arrives to take over for the men of Charlie Troop. They and their equipment thunder down narrow roads, riding armored personnel carriers, Abrams tanks. This will be home for Alpha Troop, but only for 15 days, half the normal border tour. Their time on the border is cut short this time because they'll take part in this year's winter exercise, Certain Sentinel. In addition to that, I want you to focus your training on winter field craft to get ready for Certain Sentinel, reforge it. For your tankers, I want you to start getting them ready for tank gunnery that's going to be following in March. Yes, sir. If you got any questions. Yes, sir. Certain Sentinel is weeks away. This morning, their minds are on the primary mission, the reason they are here the surveillance of the Czechoslovakian border and the defense of the western frontier. There's a sense out here of what the military calls a spree de corps. It is evident in all they do here. And that closeness, that commitment to mission and the sacrifices it requires extends to the entire CAF family. The first troops that deploy are members of what is called the reaction force. They are a small and select group of men who need to be ready to clear the camp and head for their posts on the frontier in 15 short minutes. As always here on the border, inspection. It can make the difference between being ready and perhaps life or death. To deploy the gate within 15 minutes to, uh, to police the one case on Good job. Yeah, what are you thinking? Yes, sir. checks we do here it benefits us out there it's a bad time to find out your oils are low or uh, a man doesn't know what he's doing get somebody killed at first glance camp gates appears stark maybe reminiscent of a forgotten outpost but in truth camp gates is a thriving vital training base with a real world mission poised for action at a moment's notice <laughs> never know if an alert call is just a false alarm or the real thing. That's the reason they're here. It has to be that way. Alpha Troop settles in, as settled as one can get out here. There is a special resolve in this mission, and on the faces of these cab troops, tankers, scouts, mortarmen, combined arms in the truest sense of the phrase, 
This mission presents a special challenge for any leader. Personnel management to begin with is a tremendous challenge. I have 167 troops assigned. This is where a normal, normal armor uh, company commander would have 80 to 85 assigned. So I have twice the size of a normal unit. Uh, the training challenge is quite great because I have about eight MOSs as opposed to three or four. Uh, and the mission itself is awesome compared to normal uh, company size units. No, it's, it's different, it's difficult. Uh, you've got you've got you've got more vehicles. You've got to constantly be on top of everything, and there's a whole lot more in a cab platoon than there is in, in, for instance, a tank platoon or one of the other units. And you've got mortars to play with, and with all these elements, you've got to be really on top of the situation, or you're gonna have a lot of problems. We are the safety officers, and uh, it's our prime responsibility to make sure that all the troops, not just the NCO, all the troops across the board, breach of safety. And uh, the NCO Corps just uh, elaborate each day and constant watch on it. Not all the activity takes place out here on the border. The support mechanism is considerable. We'll take a look at that side of the mission after these messages. Some of the information about what is happening at the border comes from this outpost. It's called Christensen Barracks, but to members of the 1st Squadron of the 2nd Armored Cav, it's called The Rock. The Rock stands just outside Bayreuth, about two hours' drive from Nuremberg. The bad weather starts early, and so does the duty day. The soldiers of D Company, all tankers by trade, will see each other often during the day. There are three daily formations, the first at 6.30, then at 8, and after lunch at 1 o'clock. Accountability is paramount here, for their job is to account for much that is important. Company, Here at The Rock, the rest of the world seems to be just that, the rest of the world. But the men who toil here are not forgotten. We have remote sites uh, which do not have life support uh, type of systems and quality of life. Uh, this gets a lot of attention from uh, uh, and a lot of uh, priorities uh, from the decision makers, both the core and, and uh, usurers. So uh, we find that we get uh, visited, we get support, and uh, people are concerned throughout the chain of command on how people live out here close to the border. The creature comforts here are not what a normal garrison soldier is used to. There is not a large PX here, no ice cream parlor, none of the amenities of life many American troops have grown to like or even take for granted. Likewise, there's no large hospital here, and perhaps that's why medical care here at The Rock requires a special personal touch. We don't have uh, 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 sophisticated uh, machinery to uh, diagnose patients. Mm -hmm. So um, we sort of uh, diagnose patients uh, in the old uh, general medical uh, sense in that uh, just what we see then we have to go with that and if we think we need further di diagnostic tests then we need to send them to Nuremberg. So uh, we are more or less the old country doctor out here. much changes here except maybe the faces at the post recreation center looking for a break from routine for the families of the border men there's a lot of time a lot of waiting but that time is not wasted for many family members it is their first exposure to life with the cab or any army post for that matter Linda Edwards is married to Captain Owen Edwards the man who has led Alpha Troop to Camp Gates and the border she works at the Christensen Recreation Center we've had Life here for the families can be at times difficult. 
I was ready for anything, which is what I got. <laughs> I got here, and there was a teeny tiny post way over in the eastern side of Germany, and but I can't say anything bad about it. I can't say anything negative about it. I enjoyed it. Uh, plus, I was able to go to work relatively soon, and that helps when you're out of the house and away from your family. When you're this far away from your family, it helps uh, to get out of the house and have something to keep you occupied. I mean, you miss them, but it's their occupation. They're happy with it. I mean, my husband loves what he does, so I'm, you know, I can, I can bear with it because this is a, a big part of his career. It doesn't always feel like you're isolated as we act, in actuality we are. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a very nice place, actually. Everyone's friendly. People in Bayreuth, Bindloff, the surrounding communities are very friendly, very kind. Landlords are kind. So it's really not bad. For the men of the 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment, like other cab units on duty like this on other borders, the job at times is also not bad. There are moments of reward and moments of triumph. It is not an easy chore patrolling the border and the second ACR has to patrol 651 kilometers of the Iron Curtain that separates West Germany from the communist Czech border. Aside from their real world mission, and out there there is much that is real, there is also the day-to-day -day tasking of any army unit, training in a variety of tasks and taskings of many varieties. You learn a lot out here on the border, a lot about yourself, and a lot about the mission. Uh, it gets kind of cold sometimes, but it gives me a good feeling knowing that you know, I'm pulling a job that is say one priority. It's harder in a way. You have to keep up on things a little more, but it's worth it. For all those who patrol this border and borders just about anywhere else in the world, life can sometimes be hard. But that's why these men chose this duty. Though there is training for the soldiers who man freedom's frontier, their day-to-day -day tasks give them a vital and important role in this world of ours, a role we hope you have a better appreciation of tonight. The motto of the 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment is to your prey, always ready. And though on the surface these men may seem no different than other soldiers, they are. They have to be. And while the rest of the world sleeps, they may not, because that's what it takes to be always ready on freedom's frontier. On the Czech border with the 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment, Sergeant Charlie Gill, AFN News.